Here's my tutorial of how I restyled my deal wig. You can see on the right hand side what it used to look like. I then wore it several times. That included walking two miles, going to an after party and part of a con. And let's just say after all that, it got a bit frazzled. And then I proceeded to stuff it in a bag for two months, which did not help. <laughs> So first step I suggest you do is make sure it's on quite a good wig head. Um, so you can see here I put pins in it because if you brush it, try and brush out really tough knots, you'll find it will pull the wig all over the place and cause it just to mess up more. So I tend to put two pins in and as you can see here, I'll give it a little tug, it won't move and it'll be ready to brush. So now you want to brush the wig and I'll go and explain a few ways how to brush your wig. So you want to start from the bottom and brush up. This helps present because as you brush, you brush out knots. And if you brush from the top, you end up with a load of knots at the bottom and it all becomes a big tangled mess. Here you can kind of see what happens if you do start brushing from the top. Your brush just kind of gets caught and you just end up creating knots. If there are some really tricky knots and some areas that are really, really hard to brush out, you want to use silicon spray. This really helps make the wig more smoother and easier for your comb to glide through. But you want to make sure you spray from a distance and not too close up and not too much otherwise it will make the wig really oily and it won't dry out. You should then find it easier to brush as you can see my comb kind of glides through here. I then section off my parts depending on the length of the hair you might want to do multiple sections so it can reduce the chances of being tangled with other sections whilst you're brushing. I'll show this in a sec though. Then keep repeating this process and go all the way around the wig, brushing out the different sections. And again, if there's a really, really bad knot, do from a distance spray on the silicon spray. It does really help. But as I said, again, please don't overdo it as it can ruin the wig. As you can see here, I was having a bit of a problem as I was doing the wig by myself and the wig stand kept trying to fall over. So I recommend if you can have something which holds the base. If your wig does fall over, it might just mean you have to re-go over some sections because it can cause knots. But as long as you've tied it in sections, hopefully you should be fairly okay. Make sure you don't forget to brush out any knots at the top of the wig because this can be harder to brush out later. Depending on the length of your wig, you may want to section it out into multiple sections to help stop it being tangled with other parts of your wig, depending on how much movement your wig head is getting. Sometimes it's best to use your hands to untangle. So if you see on the left here, I had quite a big section that was tangled and just by going over with my hands, the natural oils in my hands, helped just separate it a bit without being too rough on the wig. And if you see on the right, in the little knots that I couldn't get with my comb, I just untangled with my fingers, just gently, and then I was able to brush through it, no problem at all after doing that. If it's a bigger knot, remember to still untangle from the bottom. If there are any parts of your wig that you've cut to a certain size because they're styled that way, I do separate them at this point. The reason I separate them is because if you cut them to a certain length and you brush them into the other bits, then you could find that you lose them and then you'd have to cut more, which would make the wig thinner. So as you can see here, I've brushed it all out. It's a lot smoother than it was to start with. I can give it a shake and it doesn't usually get too tangled. So we're all good to style again. I decided I wanted to crimp some of my wig again as I felt like it had lost some of its volume after being brushed out. Uh, this may be something you might choose to do or might not choose to do. But if you do choose to do it, make sure you've brushed as much as the previous styling product out as you can because that can affect it. And I also want to apologise. I was watching a really, really serious and uh, emotional film at this point. So if I don't look like I'm smiling or having fun, it's because it was getting really emotional. <laughs> I have also made a tutorial on how I crimp and how I help get rid of those crimp marks. If you want to watch it, it's me styling our Hafen's wig. I will put the link at the end of this video and that will help give some tips around how to crimp. Here you can see the crimp side versus the non-crimp side. It just helped put me in a mindset to be able to style it from scratch again. As you can see here, I was crimping some more. I would say crimping is the longest process in a uh, wig styling for how I style my wigs. It definitely takes a long time and it's good to try and get some different angles whilst you're crimping the wig. Otherwise it can really hurt your back if you're constantly leaning over and wear heat proof gloves. Here you can see on the right, this is the wig all crimped. It's a lot smoother, a lot easier to go through. You can see my hands just kind of glide through. Then I section off each section and look very carefully at a reference image, as you can see here, dear, um, of how the hair splits into all the sections. I go into a lot more detail of how I do this in my other Al Haytham tutorial video, so please go check that out. And then you can see here, I'm using the hairdryer and hairspray and steamer to help hold that bit of hair up to give that base just a bit more volume. 
Then I got some really sharp scissors. I will put the link in the description. I got them from Amazon. Um, as I realized there was a bit I just wanted to trim as the position of the spikes probably changed very slightly to how I styled the wig last time. So I had to cut them to shape a bit. Then I make sure I've got the section I want, hold it in the position I want, get some hairspray, spray it on, then hold it into place whilst I dry it and then hopefully letting it set, it looked good to go. Near the end of the video, I'll show you a new gel that I'm using to help the spikes keep hold and I'll put it just at the tip, but I'll show that near the end of the video and I go around all the spikes once all the wig is done. So without explaining too much of the crimping as I have done in my other video, this is what the wig looked like after I'd done most of the spikes. I was pretty happy with it and I liked how they flicked out. I found before I made them too 3D and they looked a bit silly on. I had not at this point done the ponytail, which I leave the accessory usually to last to do, but I would probably actually recommend doing it first. This is just how my brain works. And then for the next bit, I've just sped up the process of me doing it so you can see how I do it. But again, I go into a lot of detail of how I style wigs in the other video. It's just a lot of hairspray. I will advise to get one or two bottles, uh, hold it out when you dry it. And I'd also advise drying in a downward motion because if you dry upwards, especially on longer wigs, it can then ruffle all the hair above because all the hair is being pushed by the dryer. Um, so dry down while styling. So hence, that's why I've got this video here. Um, I'm just sectioning out. I knew by memory how everything was sectioned out, but I would recommend again to keep referring back to a photo. You can also tell by the outfit change and the lighting change that uh, styling a wig, especially when you have work on during the day, uh, takes a lot of time. So I definitely recommend uh, listening to some music, putting some TV on the background, maybe an anime series, but you will need to be able to focus on the wig. So don't watch anything too intense, uh, but I hope you have a good time styling your wigs. So in this part, I did use a new product. So it's called Got To Be Glued. And what I did was, this was to help the spikes hold in their place. I got a little bit of glue just on my fingers, not much. You can see how much I use here. And then I rubbed it just in the bottom of the tip and dried it. And that really helped hold the um, wig together. I wouldn't put it all over the wig. Otherwise, it will look way too waxy as you do find the wig, the ends of the tip where you put this wax on do tend to be a slightly darker colour uh, because of the wax that's involved. You know, if you have greasy hair, it will look a little bit darker. So you only put a bit on the tips and that will help hold them together. That means if there is any wind or if there is any friction, hopefully the spike will still stay formed. So what I did was in this whole wig, I went around and done every single individual spike and put this little glue on the bottom and I've worn it twice since then and it has helped. It's still obviously like any wig going through wear and tear will get ruffled and will require a bit of restyling, but hopefully not a full restyle as you can see in this video. So there we have it. There is how I restyled my wig. I did do redo the fringe, um, from this as I didn't really like it and realized I forgot a spike but as you can see I'm wiggling it here the spikes are fairly well intact so even with a bit of wear and tear at a con or however you may want to wear your wigs wherever uh, it will stay intact for you so thank you for watching I make these videos for free please give me a like and a subscribe and follow my other channels which are linked in the description